first thing I always do before I take my forks off, if I know I'm going to be opening them up and either doing a service on them or anything to do with this top cap here, I always loosen this first while it's in the triples because you have surface area all around that you're clamping here and here to break that free. Even if you send them out to get done or send them to a buddy, whoever, if you're taking these forks off to get serviced, I highly suggest loosening this up. Just breaking the torque out. You don't have to take it completely off. There's an O-ring in there, so it's gonna hold all the oil. You just need to make sure that those are loose enough that you, that you can pretty much put a wrench on them and spin the tube to get them off. It'll save you in the long run because if he's gotta do it, maybe he doesn't have a triple that he can clamp and use as a wrench, but you don't want to scar anything in these tube areas here because you want them to clamp as tightly and as effectively as you can. If they're scored up, it's you're gonna have a bad time. So you might as well crack them open and it'll the, the person doing the, the work will thank you. Now we got the forks off, first thing we're going to want to do is strip down all of your guides, your cable stays, um, there's a cap in the end here. You have to take and screw all of your um, clickers out so you can allow the most amount of fluid to go through those channels makes bleeding a lot easier and you're not trying to restrict anything or slow anything down when you're draining all the oil out of it. I've already got them all written down in my notes. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this off, pop the cable stay off, and uh, start disassembling the fork. Here's the wood, put it on the ground, go cap side. This fork hasn't been apart yet. All I've done is just strip all the stuff off of it. Put the cap side down on the wood so you're not digging it into your concrete or in this case it's asphalt. And what you're going to do is you're going to compress it a little bit with the spring. Take your impact. Well, first thing I'll do is I'll clean this out. The best that I can here. There's not much dirt down here so... Take your impact, push down on the fork a little bit, get that spring tight, then you can get the base valve out of it. Set that aside. Now we can pour the oil out. See right now there's nothing holding other than the top cap that's holding that cartridge in there. So, you can take that 19 that I had somewhere. Spin this top cap off. and pull your cartridge out. Fork goes together like this right here. Well, here's your top cap screws onto the dampening rod which screws into here that makes this whole assembly solid but the fork can only go can only travel so far so you have the base valve 
which goes in here and only goes so far in because it's got a washer here and a shoulder that is going to screw into the bottom of this sandwiching it down here holding it all together so from here we're going to try to get in here and get a 19 on this get a 19 right on there take this top cap off because we have to make sure that it is seated properly and the dampen rods in there correctly still spring two washers preload washers here those in the bottom of I always put everything in order the way I took it off so I know I'm putting it back on the right way and then the thing is you want to make sure this nut is tight and all the way down because when we put this back together we want this cap to be seated all the way down in there because when you turn this screw for your um, one of your clickers here it pushes that piston on the inside up and down pushing on the dampener rod which is going to transfer it down to this mid valve so we got to make sure this cap is screwing all the way down on these threads so we got to make sure that nuts all the way down and we're getting a positive seat on there on the inside there with the head of that so that's why we're taking it apart a little bit further Normally, I mean, you would think, okay, well, I'm to the point now where I can just take my forks apart and get to the seals. Well, you got to make sure this is tight as well. So we might as well just take it apart. It's not that hard. Now for this, pretty straightforward. Every single fork's just about the same. Pop your dust cover off or your dust seal, wiper, whatever you want to call it. Then we get down in here. Pop the snap ring out. Find it in there. There's the end. Then you can see your seal just in there. Like a slide hammer, pop it apart. Then from here, take the bushings off, which you can see are in phenomenal shape still. Don't look too bad. I'll replace them next time. They're starting to get a little worn on the inside there. They still got some time left on them. This one's not. This one's just starting to get worn there. So pop the seal off. Check it for any damage. All right, well, everything's apart now. Oh, uh, just gonna clean everything. Quick bath in the parts washer, get this knuckle cleaned up real good. Uh, clean the inside of the tube. Check it for any witness marks, any scratches, any scrapes on the inside of it here. And then, um, new seal and we'll put it back together. All right, this, everything's cleaned, uh, inspected. I've used a uh, scotch bright red pad to put a little bit of a cross hatch on this. Uh, it helps seal the oil in, or keeps keeps a thin film oil. Seals last a little bit longer. This one did have a couple of nicks on it that I uh, fixed before when I first got the bike because it had been sitting for so long. It was the chrome's a little pitted in some spots, but they're not deep. You can you probably can't even see them in the camera. So I kind of went back through, cleaned those up. Maybe that's why it was leaking. The seal didn't look too bad, but 
both of them are leaking so I, I know it's probably the seals at that point so um one thing I like to do is I take a pill bottle and I put a little bit of fork oil in it this one it's not open yet this one's open and I'll just use it as I'm as I'm putting everything together I'll use it as like an assembly lube so go ahead and put a little bit of it on the shaft here just to kind of so add a bunch of cleaners and there's really no oil on this after spraying that shop solve on do that put a little bit on the inside of her seal bullet slide her seal bullet on put some on the outside of her seal bullet here okay first thing goes on is the dust seal loop that up could use grease too, but I don't know, I just always used fork oil. So that goes on. Snap ring. Our seal, the spring side. See, there's a lip there. There's no, well, there's a spring on the inside, but the spring on the outside goes down. So you want the open spot right here, the spring, I call it, facing the oil, facing the pressure. So, oh, well, we won't drop it. Slide that on. Seems to be wanting to seal. Mint. All right, now take this whole assembly here. Now, before I slam the seal in, I like to make sure that bushing in there is set. So, we'll take our seal driver. Set that. Push our seal down in. Set that. No binding. Seems a little dry, but. Bring in it's all good. All right, that's all together now. cartridge in base valve if you're lucky and everything's clean enough you could spin this almost to torque Here. 
it's not gonna go. Oh, maybe. There it is. Um, you don't really want to crank down on it hard. You just make sure you're on this band where the triples clamp onto. Okay, now we fill it full of fork oil. There's a set number. I just I get it to where I think I need it and then um I use my leveling gauge tool deal and go from there. You want okay. Then you gotta bleed it. So we'll Yep, that's all the air right there. Okay. You know when it's bled completely when you can pull up on this dampening rod at the very top of it you can feel the spring because there's a tiny little spring up there if you can't feel that spring you got air in it so I can actually feel the spring and then at the bottom you can see it's all fluid here you can just barely feel it touch the bottom and then it's kind of hard to pull off you know you got you're good on so with the damping rod in now this is fun. we're going to measure last time I set them up 100 millimeters so on our gauge we are at 115 bring it down to 100 Now comes the fun part. Preload shims. I'm a little fat, so and I have that tank on it. Kidding me? There. Now I can spin the spring up into it. This guy on. Snug that up, you don't want to torque it because you don't have that much clamping power right here. And just uh, reassemble this fork, you know, put the fork protector bracket on it here and the um, cable stay, and we'll be good to go. There's one, I'm not going to show you how to do the other one because it's the exact same thing. <laughs> 